A couple months ago, AK Interactive released a new type of weathering product. Well, here's an in-depth review of their new weathering pencils coming up on JC's Rip Track. Hi there, my name is John and welcome to JC's Rip Track. If this is your first time here and you're looking for advice and tips on how to transform your plastic models into something that looks like it belongs on the rails today, click on subscribe and that little bell icon so you can be notified anytime there's a new video. So have there been any products, whether dedicated for weathering or otherwise, that change the way you do things? Let me know in the comments section down below. Several months ago, AK Interactive announced and then released a series of weathering pencils, something that is brand new in the world of modeling. Sure, artists have been adapting and using watercolor pencils in various forms in the hobby for years, but these are new as they are specifically designed for weathering on plastic models. So I need to start with a full disclosure. AK Interactive sent me a few of their products to review on this channel, including a set of their weathering pencils. Now this is not a paid review or an endorsement, but they did send me these so that I could share my thoughts about them with you. Now in part, I've already done this. If you saw the last video, you'll know that I had a cold leading up to it and wasn't able to do much except share some lightly edited footage of my first experience with these weathering pencils. It was basically filming them as I was working on them and it is worth watching, but it is about 45 minutes long. And now that my voice is mostly back, I can do what I had originally planned. This video is a companion piece to the previous one, and it is my formal review with some further thoughts that may go beyond what you have already seen. Now the footage here is trimmed down or sped up for space, but I will provide cards in right over here that will link to the sections to the previous video so you can see me trying a technique in real time. So here goes. So AK Interactive's weathering pencils are genuinely a new product that is dedicated to the art of aging, dirtying, rusting, and otherwise giving models a distressed look. And while the closest comparison that I can make with them is that they are a type of watercolor pencil, even then that's not entirely accurate. What they do have in common is that they are pencils with a water-soluble core. However, watercolor pencils are designed to be used on specifically designed paper that has both a rough and an absorbent texture. Weathering pencils are intended to be applied over harder, less absorbent materials. Normally, this would be applied on plastic models, but I suspect that they would be good for wood textures as well. According to the information from an AK Interactive, the core pigment is described as a semi-grease paint, which makes it easier for them to be applied over plastic or other materials for modeling. So using them is going to be similar to, but a little bit different than saying going out and buying a set of watercolor pencils. Besides, these sets have the colors that we're looking for in weathering, and it's nice to having that color that I need right out of the box. The pencils come in either a complete set of 37 or in eight boxes of five. If you get all eight of them, then you'll end up with only three duplicates. All things considered, that's pretty good because you could collect stuff piecemeal without having to worry too much about duplication. So how do they work? Well, that question is both easier and much more complicated than it seems. Most of the time when looking at pencils, and if you follow the instructions on the package, that you take them out of the package, write them, scribble, or apply them to the model, and then come back with some water to blend or mix what you've just applied. And while this is true, and it does work, there's a couple of things that I noticed and discovered while trying them out. In fact, I found that I could do a whole lot more with them than just what's on the package. And that, I think, is what makes them a worthwhile new tool in my arsenal. So what can you do with them? Well, the short answer is lots. Because of the variety of colors, AK Interactive seems to intend that these pencils could be used in almost every aspect of weathering, especially when it comes to streaks, grime, chips, and other marks. But in addition to that, the weathering pencils can be applied several different ways, which really expands what you can do with them. So we get started with this. The first thing, regardless of the different techniques that I'm showing here with the weathering pencils, is that they're best applied over a matte coat. The more matte, the flatter, the better. And the reason is that the surface needs to have some tooth for the pigments in the pencils to stick to it. So in this way, your preparation for using these types of pencils is the same as preparing them for acrylic paints. So to start with, I already mentioned the dry application. And this is pretty straightforward. Use the pencils to apply different marks in your desired color. The first pencil I tried was the chipping color that comes in the chipping and aging set. And I tried it straight out of the box without sharpening it just to see how it worked. 
And almost right away, I got some decent looking chips and scratches on my test piece. From this point, the dry application seems to go on better with the darker colors rather than the lighter colors. I like how they can be used for easily applying effects to the edges and corners of the model. The next thing that I tested out was using a dry application followed up by using a wet brush to blend or further shape the pencils. When drawing streaks on a model, it becomes pretty obvious right away that they still look, well, pencil-y. But given that these pencils are designed to work with water, it was time to give that a try. When it comes to streaks or softening the look of the pencils, all you need is water and a brush. Now this took a little bit of experimenting on my part, but for the most part, I seem to get the best blending and softening results when the brush is simply damp rather than wet. I had some beating happening on the model, but that was the water, not the pigment that was doing that. It meant that the matte coat that I had applied wasn't quite enough, so water tension could cause it to beat up. And there's a couple of ways around this though, the first being to keep the brush simply damp rather than wet as I already mentioned, and the second is about reducing the surface tension of the water. I tried one method which I will show a little later in the video, but there's a few ways to get at that. Most of the reviews of the weathering pencils that I've seen so far stop at the dry application and wet blending. However, I had seen one of AK Interactive's own videos about doing something a bit differently and I wanted to give it a try. This time around, instead of applying the pencil dry, I would first dip the tip of it into water and then apply it to the model. Now I have to say, wow, what a difference. Applying the pencil dry works and it has its use, don't get me wrong, but in comparison, the wet application is where these pencils really shine. Here they go on much smoother, potentially even with a much lighter touch, and I was able to do a lot more in a lot less time this way. Now the pencil tip doesn't stay wet for long, so you're going to be dipping it in the water plenty of times as you go, but the difference really is night and day. Blending the wet applied pencils can go a couple different ways. You can apply it wet and then immediately follow it up with a brush. It can be damp or the brush could be dry, just relying on the water that's already mixed to the pigments on the surface of the model. It depends on what you want to do. I found that this was one of the most effective ways of getting some realistic rust streaks that rivals the kind of stuff that I get with oils. Now another way that you can blend down a wet application is to apply it wet, let it dry for a little bit, and then come back with a damp brush and reconstitute the paint. This does give you some flexibility too. I found this was also useful in blending out any tide marks that had appeared from a previous application. This can be used for streaks of almost any type, including rust and grime running down off the model, as well as the soft edges around dirt or even soot on a locomotive. Wet surface application and blending. So not only can the pencils be applied dry or with a wet tip, you can also wet the surface of the model and then apply the pencils with both a wet or dry tip. Now I only started exploring this option, but it seems to work. I was curious to see if I could use this to simulate a pin wash. It sort of worked, but I think I need to go back for a few more trials to see if I can get it to work. If there is one limitation to how these pencils work, it's not with the pencils themselves, but with the properties of water. You see, water can beat up on surfaces if you use too much of it, or it can potentially interfere with the work that you're going after. So you need to apply small amounts of water rather than pools of it, or find a way to break the surface tension so that the water flows around the detail of the model better. One of the benefits of oils, for example, is that mineral spirits are far thinner and can pull pigment into these detail areas quite easily. Since mineral spirits have no effect on weathering pencils, we have to find a way to thin the water down. Now there's a couple ways that I can do this. I tried thinning down the water with isopropyl alcohol, which worked, but there is a few other options such as a tiny amount of dish soap or even artist wetting agents. The alcohol worked fine, but it does need to be mixed with water as it won't activate the pencils really all by itself. So here's a quick rundown on the pros and cons of AK Interactive's new weathering pencils. So the pros, one, they're quick and easy to use. There's very little setup or cleanup time. Pull them out of the case, sharpen them as you need to, and you go to town. The second one is that these are cost effective. One package of five pencils costs about five euros directly from AK Interactive. There's also very little repeat in the eight packages currently available. And if you were to buy all of them, you could get 40 pencils with only three repeated colors. 
So versatility. So far, these pencils seem to be one of the most versatile weathering products I've ever tried. While most weathering products have more than one application, the fact that there are several different ways that the pencils can be used means that is going to be multiplied even further. There's going to be a lot of experimenting in my future with these. Following on the plus of versatility, because there are so many colors available, they really can be used to achieve a variety of effects. One big example is rust streaking. And you can use these to get some convincing results that are comparable with working with oils. This also plays well with other techniques. While the video doesn't show it, because the weathering pencils are not affected by mineral spirits or turpentine, you can combine them with oils or enamels without worrying about how they interfere with the pencils. Now we're going to look at a few of the cons. The first one is the learning curve. Because these pencils are so new, there is a learning curve that all of us are climbing as we try them out. And while they are most similar to watercolor pencils, there's still enough about them that is unique to the hobby of modeling that means we still have a little ways to go before we can really explore what these can do. It means experimenting, playing around, and seeing what works. Now that's not a bad thing, but it does mean that if you want to get some practice in before using them on a showpiece model, I know that I do, and the covered hopper remains my test bed. Another thing that you have to be careful with is the fineness of the pencil. I work in N scale, and so in trying these out, I wanted to see how sharp of a point that I could get. And sharpening them down to a fine point does have its limits. Unfortunately, the pencil sharpeners that I have available to me aren't that great, and the effort to bring a pencil down to a fine point with these hand sharpeners, I broke off the paint core more than once. If you really need to get a fine tip point, the best way is to use a number 11 blade and carve the point down yourself. This picture shows how they look out of the box, another one that is partially sharpened by a sharpener and then tightened down with a blade, and the last one is completely sharpening with a blade because I had broken the paint core out. Out of the box, particularly with the lighter pigment pencils, when dry they seem to be a little thin. However, the wet application option seems to make up for this, so that if you have them and aren't getting the coverage that you want when using them dry, well, try them with the wet application first. So one of the things that I've hoped to do on this channel is to share new techniques and products as I experience them. This is as close to a genuinely new product and a technique that I've come across so far, and so there's a lot to explore and experiment with them. I'm grateful for the opportunity to try these and share them with you, and I expect that I'll be doing some more videos on specific techniques using these pencils in the future. Now since they are new, you'll need to ask your local hobby shop to carry them. You can also order them directly from AK Interactive, and failing that, I've also included some links where you can get them on Amazon. So I hope you found this useful, and if you want more tips on how to get the most out of your painting and weathering projects, don't forget to hit subscribe and that little bell icon so you won't miss any upcoming videos. Also, if you haven't already, check out the other videos on this channel as well as some of the social media links down below. You can go to my Patreon page and you get involved in the creative process for this channel. So thanks so much for watching, good luck, and may you keep on track.